We think it's going to come down sometime between the 8th and the 10th of May. And in that period of uncertainty, it goes round the Earth over 30 times. So we have no clue where it's gonna come down at this point. So I know that it's a little bit sunny, but I had to get this video recorded and out there for you. I wanted to talk about the fact that there are a bunch of large pieces of metal that are going to be falling out of the sky and the catch is we don't know when or where this is going to happen yet. Yeah, I'm talking about China's Long March 5B. That is the Chinese rocket used to launch China's new Tianhe space station. Well, its core is expected to come crashing into the planet. We don't know when, and that is kind of scary to think about. In fact, we don't know where this will happen until the last very few minutes, and that's because of how fast it's traveling. You're wrong by an hour about when it's gonna come down. You're wrong by 18,000 miles about where, because right. it's going at 18,000 miles an hour. Now, if you aren't caught up with what's going on, which I'm sure a lot of you are, the 30 meter high core of the Long March 5B rocket launched the Heavenly Harmony unmanned core module into low Earth orbit on the 29th of April. Then the Long March 5B itself entered a temporary orbit, and this has set the stage for a very, very large uncontrolled re-entry. So I wanted to reach out to my friend and astronomer Jonathan McDowell. He's with the Harvard Center for Astrophysics. He was actually about to hop on a call with CNN, but I got to him in time so that we could get some great insight as to how worried we should be. And basically the too long didn't read version is that yes, there is a threat, it is a concern, but it's not likely that it's going to impact an inhabited area. And here he is to explain. I mean, this is more serious than the SpaceX re-entry. The SpaceX stage was three tons and this one's 22 tons. This is the second launch of this rocket. The first one was almost exactly a year ago in May, 2020. And it also left its core stage in orbit. And that stage crashed in Africa. So we do expect a few fairly large pieces of metal to survive re-entry and and fall somewhere so it's in a 41 degree orbit which means it goes from 41 degrees south to 41 degrees north and back again and so all of the earth in that latitude range uh, is what it's flying over uh, and most of that is ocean most of that is the pacific right so if you want to bet bet on the pacific and just to be clear again it's not that this thing is going to like wipe out a whole city or something like that right it's not that kind of catastrophe it's that a few pieces big pieces of metal will survive re-entry and and as they did in ivory coast could damage buildings if you're really unlucky they could hit someone so keep in mind this is a 22.5 metric ton module it's in its correct orbit after separating as planned from the core stage of the rocket, but it's now expected to re-enter in a few days. And what makes this really kind of nerve wracking is the fact that it is uncontrolled and very unpredictable. It's something that Jonathan says really is unacceptable. But here's a case where you have a large object that they just didn't care. They just said, let's, let's let it re-enter. And so the Chinese could easily have done this. They could have designed it so that the Tianhe module, which was the payload on this launch, did a little squirt of its engines to make the last few miles an hour to orbit and keep the core stage uh, suborbital. But they didn't do that because they don't care. They're like, yeah, let's let it fall on whoever it falls on. And this is just one of several large debris events in the last couple of decades. In fact, it wouldn't be fair not to mention the event in 1979 when NASA's 76-ton Skylab space station made its uncontrolled re-entry. Ground controllers were able to steer that space station somewhat over the planned re-entry point that was over the Indian Ocean, but that debris track stretched a lot further than they expected. So to put it in perspective, this one will be big, but it won't be nearly as big as Skylab, which is good news. 1979, right? We had the re-entry of Skylab. Yes. Famously uh, over Australia. Uh, large pieces reached the ground and people went, huh, perhaps we shouldn't do this anymore. Since then, until the Long March 5B, no one has let 10 ton plus objects do d deliberately uncontrolled re-entries. 
And so really, this is unusual um, for something this big to be just left in orbit. And the Chinese are basically taking the attitude that, you know, NASA took back in the 70s, which is, ah, the Earth's big. It probably won't hit anyone. What would you like to see moving forward? Space agencies should get together and issue technical recommendations. Don't leave things bigger than 10 tons in orbit without active deorbit, right? right. And, and have that be a formal recommendation. Countries can then use that as a basis for their recommendations to their space agencies. And if a country doesn't care, uh, then we can shame them for it more, you know, by pointing to this particular uh, document or whatever, right? I think that's it, that helps. So there's an international treaty on liability for space objects. If my spaceship crashes into your barn, your country can sue my country and get damages. But there is no equivalent of like a reckless driving fine. And this is not the end of China's launches. In fact, they will have several launches, more modules to be launched for their space station that they're building. They expect to have that completed by the end of 2022. So I wanna know from you in the comments, do you agree with Jonathan? Do you think that there needs to be more international cooperation, maybe some recommendations that need to be followed so that we don't have these events where we're just kind of biting our nails wondering, uh, where's this thing gonna fall out? and you know could it potentially damage a building maybe hopefully not have any casualties so i wanted to talk about it with you guys and, and get your thoughts all right if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button please subscribe if you haven't already i really appreciate you guys and all of the support for the channel it means a lot i have so much stuff that i'm working on honestly there aren't enough hours in the day and there's just not enough elianas to complete everything that i want to complete but i'm doing my best and i really appreciate all of the returning viewers subscribers commenters it means a lot it keeps me going hope that this keeps you going see you soon